Hi everyone. So after discussing anterior crossbite, we will be discussing today about posterior crossbite and its treatment. So this is a part three of our crossbite series. Now, okay. Now before we head into its treatment, we need to understand that posterior crossbite can be of three types: dental, skeletal, and functional. That means if the cause is just tooth related, that means there is just a problem in the position of eruption of tooth, then it is completely dental. That means we'll call it as dental posterior crossbite. That means the tooth has erupted in an abnormal position, which is why it is in a crossbite relation to its opposite teeth. The second is a situation where we call it as skeletal posterior crossbite. That means the teeth have erupted in their normal position, but because the upper and or the lower jaw are abnormal in their sizes that means the upper jaw can be small and the lower jaw can be large or just the upper jaw is small than it's supposed to be then even in that situation or let's say the lower jaw is abnormally large and the upper jaw is absolutely fine either of these situations will give rise to a situation wherein the patient will have a posterior crossbite then there can be a situation wherein uh, the teeth are absolutely fine, the skeleton is also fine, but there is a functional shift in the lower jaw. That means there is some interference while the patient is closing the mouth and to avoid that interference, the lower jaw is shifting and taking up a position wherein it finds no interference. Then in that case, it's a functional shift because of which the teeth are in a crossbite relation to each other. Okay. Okay, now in a typical situation, let's say to start with a dental posterior crossbite. That means any teeth behind canines are the posterior teeth. Okay, now if one or a single tooth, let's say in most common position, most common situation is the molars. Okay, most commonly the first permanent molar or the premolar. Now if a single tooth is involved posteriorly, in a crossbite situation, then in that case, there is something called as cross arch elastics. They are highly, highly useful and they can be used to correct, as I've already mentioned, to correct the isolated first permanent molar in crossbite. Isolated means that only first permanent molar is involved in the crossbite situation. Now, the way is uh, how it's put and all that you don't need to understand the dentist takes the measurement and then he applies that silver band that you can see around the first permanent molar and all that is done by the dentist the your your part that you have to do is that means the patient has to do or the parent has to do is you have to change the elastics daily and this will go on for the next four to eight weeks depends on patient to patient that how long it takes to be corrected once it's corrected, it does not require any kind of retainer or any kind of retaining plate because once you correct it, its normal position will hold it and will not let it go uh, back into the crossbite position. Okay. Now, if the crossbite is skeletal in origin, then for that we have few other options. Okay. Now, if um, uh, we want to go for something that is slow. Okay, we don't want a rapid expansion. We want a slow but stable expansion. Then in that case, we have something called as the fixed palatal wire designs. That means the W arch and the quad helix that you can see on the screen. These are the names of two appliances which are fixed and they are used for correcting the posterior crossbite. Because they are resting against the palate, that is why we call it that we call it as fixed palatal wire designs. Okay. Now, as you can see, the only difference between W arch and quad helix is that quad helix has got two round loops, if you can see against the canines. Those two helixes or the two loops of wire and another two loops of wire behind near the molars, they help in increasing the range of action of the force that is being applied. Now, because the range of action of force is increasing, so that reduces the amount of force that is required to produce tooth movement. This is like a very simple and basic concept, which you need to understand um, to uh, understand how this uh, biomechanic of tooth movement actually happens. Any which ways. So basically, these are the two appliances uh, which are fixed 
and are resting against the palate and that is why we call it that we call it as fixed palatal wire designs and these are slow palatal why slow i'll tell you why first we need to understand that what are the some what are some of the important points that are with the slow expanders now the first thing is the adjustments are done by the dentist either weekly or two bi-weekly depends upon the progress that is shown by the patient also the force that is applied in any kind of slow expander like this is less okay it's uh, almost 400 to 600 grams on the molars and around 200 to 300 grams uh, near the canines so it's basically around one pound also the retention period that means uh, the period wherein you need to uh, maintain the results that you've achieved that is also less that is three months because the changes that you've achieved is slow and gradual and is stable okay then but in cases wherein the patient has the history of having any habit of like thumb sucking or lip sucking or digit sucking and all that so in that case you need to have a longer retention why uh, you'll understand if you watch that video of mine i'll put the link in the description box okay and as i've already mentioned the changes that are obtained are more stable also uh, because this design is very like it's very delicate and there's very uh, minimal soft tissue that is being uh, approached so that is why the discomfort is very less there is very less speech disturbance and also the soft tissue irritation is very less now coming to the posterior crossbite that is skeletal in origin when we try to correct it with the help of fixed palatal expanders or the fixed jack screw expanders why fixed obviously because it is fixed and can only be removed by the doctor jack screw because that because of that screw that you that you can see in the center that's the jack screw and because it expands the narrow uh, upper arch because of which it is in crossbite so in that case we use uh, this type of expanders it's called as the hyrax or the rapid palatal expander of Haas type as you can see on your screens now both of them are almost similar but the only difference in the Haas type of expander is that it has got an acrylic plate uh, which helps in retaining or gaining anchorage from the palate so these are rapid palatal expanders and the before ones that we saw were the slow palatal expanders now the thing with them is that the amount of force that is applied through them is large remember the amount of force that was being applied there was one pound but here it is almost three to ten pounds on each side also these rapid palatal expanders they tend to open the mid palatal suture now you can see that uh, in the palate if you will see there's this uh, basically two palatal shelves are joined in the center okay all through the width because of which you will see this suture in the center and this palatal expander actually opens the suture in the center i'll put the picture in my next slide so that you can understand what i'm trying to say and so that opens the suture because of which the upper jaw can expand now in this case because we are achieving the results rapidly the correction has to be over corrected that means you need to over correct it by three to four millimeters because it does relapse right it tries to come back to its original position so when it tries to come back to its original position it just you know contracts a little bit and even if it contracts and adjusts to the actual position of biting and all in that case it should come to the normal resting position that means the it should come to a position wherein the crossbite remains corrected the advantage with it is obviously the results are achieved quickly but retention with this has to be for three to six months because the results that you've achieved have been really quick and for them to stabilize and consolidate it needs time of almost six months but also the good thing with this is it has got a success rate of 90% okay now so see uh, as you can see on the picture on your screens that central line that you see is the mid palatal suture that means the two palatal bones 
or the two palatal shelves are joining each other to form the heart palate that you can see. Now to expand the narrow upper jaw what we do is or what this appliance does is the hole that you can see in the center I suppose now there's a small key that is given to the patient what the patient does is inserts that key in that hole and turns the uh, screw as directed by the dentist now it's usually one turn per day okay in the arrow in the direction of the arrow that's shown so when that happens when you turn it each day it applies pressure okay so that pressure is applied laterally that force is applied laterally and that lateral force opens up the mid palatal suture and that expands your upper jaw in case wherein the upper jaw is small which is why it is giving rise to a skeletal posterior crossbite okay now can be a situation wherein you want to go for simpler appliances okay now in a skeletal posterior crossbite when you want to correct it with the help of removable appliances that means that appliance can be removed by the patient or the parent itself then in that case we use something called as the removable split acrylic plate that's also called as the squares plate now this is a slow expander this also has got a screw like so in the screen and you're giving you're given a key that key is to be inserted in that hole and it is to be turned once weekly remember the rapid palatal expanders were to be uh, turned once daily but since the squares plate is a slow expander it is turned once weekly and once uh, the results are obtained the plate uh, this kind of plate is usually discontinued and you have got a retainer again the retention phase in this is usually less because it is a slow expansion the results are more or less stable so almost three months of retention period is fine for them okay now coming on to the functional posterior crossbite now if the cause is functional then it can be because of any of the reasons that means if there's a shift in the lower jaw while closing that shift in the lower jaw can be because of upright primary canine interferences that means see the canines uh, if it's in primary or in permanent dentition it's usually pointed right so its edge is pointed now that pointed jaw in some of the cases can cause interference while the lower jaw is closing and if that is happening then the lower jaw will try to shift in a position where it does not find any kind of interference from that pointed tip of the canine and that will lead to a crossbite situation also if the child has thumb or finger habits in that situation also there is some or the other kind of lower jaw shift because of placing the thumb or the finger in certain areas and if there is mouth breathing or some airway problem so to have a proper air inflow in one side by the time one gets the nose and the mouth or when that happens then also the lower jaw can shift it in a situation really or in mainly leading right to a posterior crossbite. So in any which ways the treatment of functional posterior crossbite is first by diagnosing the problem and once we've diagnosed the problem we need to correct that problem to achieve the results. Okay.